you know, when people say don't sweat the small stuff, I understand why. I was pregnant with my third child and everything was fine. And then my 18 week ultrasound, we noticed a black mass in the baby's neck. Each time that we went back for an ultrasound, it grew. Dr. Shaw even said, I've been doing this for 35 years and I've never seen something like this before. And you're probably not gonna have this baby at Fairview and you're not gonna have it naturally. It would all be done at Main Campus OR. We're gonna take him immediately because our main concern is that he's breathing. It was very overwhelming. However, they assured me that this is the best option for you and your son. Dominic was due to be born in mid to late August. I remember coming home from work, I would grab the girls and roughhouse with them and stuff. All of a sudden I could feel this giant lump on the left side of my stomach. And I remember yelling to Lisa like, hey Lisa, come here, like, check this out. And uh, she comes over and she's kind of starts poking around and it's hard as a rock. So Lisa and I make the decision basically because we know what's going on with Dominic. Whatever's going on with me has to be put off. Dominic is born, he's breathing, he gets moved to NICU, can't even see the cyst. The plan was to wait till he was older to get it removed. And we're home for two weeks and then all of a sudden this, the cyst is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It was middle of the night and I remember seeing his face and it was, it was going blue. We drove downtown with him. Dr. Krakowitz came in and said, you know, it looks like we gotta do this now. It was about a four and a half hour surgery. It was wrapped into his jugular. Half of his thyroid needed to be removed. It was non-cancerous. He was in the hospital, was healing well. Lisa insisted that I go. She's like, Josh, it's time. You have to take care of this. You gotta get it looked at. Lisa had made an appointment for me at Strongsville Cleveland Clinic. I meet with Dr. Smolak and, and he's like, well, let's just get a CT scan. Let's get a scan. Let's have it come in tomorrow. Dr. Smolak walks in and, and pulls up the CT scan. He's like, you see this? This big gray mass here is like, he's like, um, you know, he's like, this is not supposed to be here. He's like, I'm sorry to tell you, Mr. Cantwell, but you have pancreatic cancer. I've already set an appointment for you upstairs with Dr. Ali in oncology. And he's like, I'd like to walk you up there. I remember meeting with Dr. Ali and immediately feeling just how professional he was. But I also remember him getting a piece of paper out. And he wrote across the top of the paper, pancreatic cancer. And then he drew two lines. And on the right side, he wrote slow growing. And on the left side, he put aggressive. And he wrote, um, excellent prognosis on this side. And over on this side, he wrote fatal. And then he said, he said, Mr. Campbell, he's like, you need to have a biopsy today. I have a strong feeling that you're on this side. I immediately thought like, okay, slow growing, excellent prognosis. Like I had a chance, I had hope. Having made the diagnosis, uh, I felt that the, the person that I would send him to was Dr. Matthew Walsh at the main campus. One thing I'll never forget, and I remember was meeting with Dr. Walsh and him saying to me, he's like, Josh, you know, he's like, our plan is to go in and take this out. We might have to take out your spleen, your gallbladder, your stomach. And then it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Josh had a huge tumor the size of a basketball and what we had to do is take out three quarters of his pancreas, his entire stomach, part of his liver, and as well as the blood vessels to his liver which we had to reconstruct. He explained to me what he had done. So obviously I was shocked and he's like, don't worry about that, he'll be okay. Just know I got it, it's gone, I got it out. When I got out of the ICU and I was moved to a step down floor, I remember having Dan, whenever he was there, I just felt such a sense of comfort and a sense of relief because he just seemed so on top of it. 
and he was able to tell me why things were happening the way they were happening and was encouraging me and, and giving me hope that, because you don't know when you're in it, you don't know if you're doing well or not. I had my first appointment with Dr. Ali after the whole surgery was over. And he said, this report is unbelievable. He's like, I've never seen anything like this. He said, you know, 95% of surgeons would have never been able to pull this off. They would have opened you up, saw how complicated it was, and they would have sewn you back up and sent you home. And they would have said, there's nothing you can do. And I would have been 36 years old, terminal, you know, just waiting to die. If ever anything goes wrong, you've always heard you have to go to the Cleveland Clinic. And never once did I think that I'd be in that situation, but it happened. Thank you so much for everything that you did to get our family through the hardest time. When things <clears throat> probably couldn't have been much worse. I mean, we felt like we got the absolute best uh, care. We were always taken care of with respect, like you guys wanted us to get better, get us the next step, the next day, and it's, it's meant the world to us. We're here a year later after these crazy experiences, and uh, we wouldn't be where we are without you, so we just want to say thanks. Thank you. When people say don't sweat the small stuff, I understand why. Nothing really matters except for your family and life.